Barbecue. This is my favorite barbecue joint in my town, Nightfire Barbecue. And they make my favorite sandwich, the PB&J. And they had a broken chair. It's been in the family, and we needed to repair it. You can see that leg, totally smashed, falling apart. No good. We need to flip it over and assess the damage, get this broken leg off. We have a nail, lots of nails going through, and other pieces broken. There was a dowel and screws all around. We're going to retain the use of these screws because we want to keep the original look because it was a family heirloom type deal. So we want to look in the end like I never even repaired it. Flathead screws are the bane of my existence, but it is what it is. So slow and steady wins the race with flathead screws. Thankfully, I was able to take them out without stripping anything. So we removed all the screws holding this chair together, and I believe that's about all that held this chair together. I don't know if glue was ever used, but one last screw, and we can get it apart. The arm was actually glued together, so I'm taking my razor knife, and I'm cutting around the edges, scoring it, so when I pull it off, it should pop right off. Using the oscillating tool to cut through, because I believe it might have been dowled or some hidden nails or pin nails gone through. So we got that removed and now I'm taking the cat claw and just prying out these nails that are held inside. It's a little confusing how this all went together because there's a bunch of nails in different places and even some hidden nails. But slow and steady wins the race once more, making sure not to damage anything else. If you take a look at this, I was a little confused. There's a nail coming out with no nail head on the other side. Found out later, it was a double-headed nail. Interesting. Advanced joinery here. All right, we're assessing this. We got to recreate this piece and remove all the nails. It has a little bit of a curve, so we need to use a wider piece than the actual leg. So here it is. I'm using a one by four, cutting it in half to give me the width and the thickness of the actual leg. And I'm just cutting it down to a general shape. Nothing too fine at this point. We just need to be a little bit oversized to make sure that our leg will fit onto this piece of wood. All right, here we are. We're going to attach these two pieces together. So I'm going to go over and get some clamps. These are parallel clamps. Most of these are from Jet. Jet makes my absolute favorite clamps. All the links to this is going to be in the description. But they are my favorite by far. So I'm using some type on three glue here. I'm gonna spread it out over the wood. I like to use the squiggly pattern. That's a uh, technical term for woodworking and get a good even coat across the entire wood surface. Then I'm taking the Rockler silicone brush and just brushing it all over there so it's flat and now I'm clamping it up in the clamps. We're not crushing this, we're just getting it together and then I'm going to use some other clamps I have, these quick clamps from Irwin. They're going to apply the pressure in between the four jet clamps. And it's the next day. So I got to give you the shot of me coming into the shop and starting the day. Ode to Wobie. He likes to do that. No woos here, though. Taking it out of the clamps. We got a 24-hour uh, drying, so we pop it out. Now we have one thick piece of wood. It's time to make this uh, template. So I throw down the completed piece of broken leg and I trace it out with a pencil, getting a pretty rough draft. Thank goodness this is a uh, heirloom piece, so it doesn't have to be precise. And we're just getting a general shape. Bringing out the Harvey Alpha bandsaw is a 15 inch. This is new to me. This is a three horsepower and this thing cuts like butter. I am not slowing down. I am not stalling the motor. Love this machine. I'm just tracing these lines with bandsaw, getting that beautiful arc on one side, flip it over and do the other side. I'm going to save these scrap pieces for getting the stain right. Yes, that's right. We have to stain it and match. That's not easy, but we got it. So we got the two sides and then I finish off with the length of the legs. Once the rough shape of the Leg is cut out on the bandsaw. I bring it over to the template and make sure that we are close. And as you can see, it's got that beautiful arc that the leg has. So it looks good. However, we have a problem. It is thicker than the leg. 
So I put it next to it and I mark the leg and I bring it over the joiner and I start making it thinner, 16th inch of a pass at a time. This is my desktop joiner. I've since upgraded to a Laguna joiner, uh, floor staying model, but it's the last time I ever used this joiner. Fun fact, this was the first ever YouTube video I ever put out on this cut tech joiner, but it served me well, link in the bio. So now it's time to plane it, get an even service on both sides. This is my DeWalt planer. If you have a wood shop, this is the planer to get before you go industrial. It is a 12 inch lunchbox planer style, and this is the one. Planing through the planer is a boring process. You go really slow, just a little bit at a time. Make sure it is to the correct th thickness. You can see I checked the thickness there. We're looking good. I compared it right next to each other. We're flat on the top, so we got the thickness we needed. Bring it over the spindle sander. sander. This is the uh, rigid oscillating spindle sander and uh, regular sander in one. This is the best sander on the planet. If you have a wood shop, this is the one to get. Again, link in the bio. Not just saying that because I want you to buy it. I'm saying it because I've used a bunch and this is for sure the most versatile and uh, long lasting. And I've never had a single problem with this thing. So I'm just sanding out the bandsaw marks on this one and making it a little bit smoother. I don't have room for a permanent vise in my shop uh, or I don't really want a permanent vise on my tabletops. So I bought this one on Amazon. It is a vise that actually clamps to a tabletop. So you only use it when you need it. I love this thing. If you didn't know they exist, they do. If you don't have the room for a clamp, this one works really well. It's a six inch jaw vise and I'll link it. I think I bought it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, but this will help hold to get that final sand with a uh, orbital sander. This is the orbital sander I'm using. It's the DeWalt one. It's battery powered. It's 20 volt. It works really well. Works well to get out any final marks I have on there. Then the last step, I'm using some sanding sponges going up to 220 to get that nice and smooth, including rounding over the edges of the foot. So here we are. We have uh, a crack down the back I need to take care of. I'm not trying to overdo this, this fix. I'm just trying to make it look very normal. So I'm spreading glue into the crack, letting it run down, and then wiping off the excess. And then I'm gonna clamp it up so this back piece will be back to normal. Normally glue joints fail uh, less than wood actually fails. So after a few hours, we are glued together. You can't even tell that there was a missing piece or a broken piece there. Back to the template, putting it on top. Next step, we got to match up the holes that were drilled for the screws and for the one dowel pin that still exists that I'm going to reuse. So I'm using this square to set the depth and the uh, alignment of these holes. And then I set the depth with this square so I know how deep I need to go uh, to the center of where these holes line up. So that's how I found the hole right there. That's where it needs to go. And finally, I need to know how deep I'm gonna go. So I get my drill bits and I'm testing which drill bit will actually fit in that hole. I'm going a little undersized at first, just to make sure that I don't ruin it because I only get one shot at this and I don't wanna ruin all the work I've done. Take some tape and wrap it around the drill bit. That'll set my depth and I'll know how deep I can go while drilling. Yeah, attach that drill bit into my drill and then I'm gonna drill out these holes just freehand, trying to keep it as level as I can get. And I'm just giving you a nice shot of DeWalt battery here because I covered up the camera <laughs> with the DeWalt battery. But I went down to the tape and now I know I have the exact depth I need. Here's something, we have a little splinter out. So I put some wood glue in here, but I can't clamp this in place. You can see I have the Starbond CA glue, cryonoacylate. It is some fast, fast drying with talking seconds drying glue. I use this on all 3D parts that I need to glue together, but it works perfect in wood as well. And it's gonna act as the clamp so the wood glue can dry. So I just put some of that in there, mixing it up with the wood glue, and it will hold that little chip out piece right in place, and it'll look like it never was gone. 
All right, now I have this old dowel that got broken before I got to it. So I'm using the tough built pool saw, folding pool saw, trim that down flush. Perfect, smooth, I'm not gonna reuse that. So that took care of that issue. Now I'm gonna just do a test fit to see if the leg I cut and the hole I drilled for that one dowel rod worked. It works perfect and it's flush with the ground. It doesn't tilt or flop or anything like that. So the hard part I'd say is done. We got a leg that fits and looks right and is the right size. So now I just need to transmute all of these other holes for all of the other bolts onto the new leg. So I'm using the same process as I did before and I'm gonna drill out all the holes into the new leg so I can put the screws through it. That tape trick, that's key here. That one screw had a fatter head, so I had to drill out where the head can go in there. All right, time for stain. This is the stain I had on hand. I'm hoping it was close enough. It's some varathane and some Minwax. One is a little brown and one is a little red, and this chair is a little in between. This is the cutoff from the piece I did on the bandsaw. I'm just testing the stain on that piece. So it's always important to take the exact same piece if you ever cut and test on that exact piece because no piece of wood is ever the same. You can see we're close on the, the right, we're kind of far away on the left, but we really need in between. So I'm gonna take both of them, mix them up in this red cup, uh, and then go ahead and apply it onto here and see how close we get. This is one coat, one light coat. So it looks closer to the top. Now I gave it a little second coat, a little heavier give it a little bit more darkness. We're gonna compare the two. Stain is the hardest part of this whole thing. Matching that stain is the hardest part. I got it pretty close, so I'm gonna go ahead and stain the new leg all the way. I gave it one coat, and then I came back the next day and gave it a second coat so I can go darker. I didn't wanna go redder, I needed to go darker, so I went a heavy coat on the second one and let it sit before I wiped off the excess. You want to make sure you don't have any runs because this is a four-sided piece. We need to make sure that all four sides don't run from the other sides. Here you go. This is it next to the other one. And you can see, I don't know if it translates through the camera, but you can see that it looks just like it. So I got super lucky. Time to glue it back into place. So I'm using the tight bond again in every point that it connects together. And I'm using the Rockler brush to brush it all in and have it even and a good contact point for all of the glue. So once we get that spread out, we're gonna go ahead and install it into the chair. All right, it fits good. And now to hold it in place, we're gonna put the screws into where they go. I totally put this screw in the wrong spot, realized it halfway through. And these aren't going fully threaded in, it's just aligning everything. So I can bring over the clamps and clamp everything into place while the glue dries. I'm getting some serious clampage with the parallel clamps. I'm using a Bessie one right here. It's a little lighter duty, so it's gonna hold it together. And then once I got the one clamped down, I'm gonna go ahead and carefully screw these down because they're flathead and I don't wanna strip them out. And this will attach everything back together. And then once I'm finished with that, I'm gonna put clamps on everything because I'm gonna glue all the other joints that I can to keep it in place because it's kind of rickety in every situation, but I didn't want to take it apart. All right, it's glued up the next day. Everything's solid. I'm checking to see if there's any rockage or anything. It is much more solid than it came to me, so I'd say that's a job well done. And here it is, the final product. You can't even tell which side I fixed, which is exactly the way I want it to be. I want you to not know that this chair was ever fixed. I used oak on this one because it was the wood that closely matched this chair uh, and what was available to me. It looks like there's some pine pieces, some oak pieces, some other pieces, so and there we go. Time to take it over to my buddy at Nightfire because you know I need some barbecue. So I'm loading up in the truck and we're gonna head over there. If you're in Cersei, highly recommend this spot. This is Nightfire Barbecue. It is it's the place to get barbecue. He is low and slow and has all kinds of delicious stuff. I recommend the PB&J. 
and I recommend the brisket. Those are my two favorite. Here's the phone number if you need to hit them up. They are open Wednesday through Saturday. And this is it. When you walk inside, you'll see this. This is the place to go. Well, that's it, guys. That is the chair. That is the barbecue. This is Matt. Come visit him for some barbecue. Hope you enjoy the chair, Matt. Hope your wife loves it. Y'all have a good one. Take care and happy woodworking.